All right, uh, Eunice, welcome in. Uh, and let's get your mic demuted so we can have a bit of a conversation here and start this broadcast off in a minute. Hi, Eunice, how you doing? Good, how are you? I am fantastic. I get to host for some of the coolest people in the world for the next many hours uh, with Global Biodiversity Festival Day 2. So how do you beat that as a gig? I don't know. Um, so uh, let's get ready to dive in. First, I want to do a huge shout out. We've got people tuning in from China, Portugal, France, and Germany right now, all to hear about your awesome topic. So I'm really excited about that. <laughs> Thank um, you. And yeah, for those joining in for the first time, again, it's early in the morning here in, in Eastern time anyway, globalbiofest.com. You can check out the whole schedule of awesome speakers today. We got some virtual field trips. We have an astronaut. We got all sorts of neat people and I encourage you to stay tuned throughout the day. But the reason we're all here right now is for Eunice Tan. So she is a National Geographic funded environmental studies researcher out of Singapore. And she is gonna highlight today for us the wide and wonderful world of stick and leaf insects, bugs that look like sticks and leaves, but we're going to explore a little bit more about what makes them tick, some of the ecological interactions they have, and why they are one of the most wonderful groups of, of animals in the world. Certainly, I think so. Um, and I think Eunice is uh, in a firm agreement on that. So without further ado, thanks so much for joining us, and then take us away. Thanks. Um, I hope the audio works. Um, does it work okay now? Your great audio, when you do screen share, if you want, there's a little button on the bottom that says share computer audio, and that'll make sure if you have any videos that they go even better. Okay, so I hope it works. Are you seeing my screen? Beautiful, look what a creature that is. Okay, um, so thank you for inviting me and thank, uh, thank you for joining me on um, this session to learn more about stick and leaf insects. So, um, First of all, greetings from Singapore. As you've already introduced, I'm from Singapore and it's nighttime now. It's slightly past eight, it's dark outside. Um, and I have two sites here that maybe some of you are familiar with, whether you've seen them or you've been here yourselves. So um, welcome to Singapore. Um, but we're not just a built up city. We also have some forest. Um, I'm currently at Yale and US College. And what you can hear at the background is some frogs. Um, calling. So we have some biodiversity on campus. Um, we also have some pretty decent forests and I'll show you more what stick, in, stick and leaf insects we find in our forests. So first of all, um, what are stick and leaf insects? So stick and leaf insects belong to this group Phasmatodia and the word Phasma uh, actually is referring to something like phantom. And that's because they sort of look like parts of vegetation, even though they're animals or insects. So have a look at this picture here. Uh, can you spot any stick insects or how many stick insects can you spot? Okay. Um, I say five. Yes, <laughs> five. Um, Maybe okay, four. close, not quite. So there are three. Oh, <laughs> so it, it's a little bit tricky because they look so much like um, parts of vegetation. Sometimes we go out and we're like, that must be a stick. But no, it, it's, um, yeah, it's a stick, it's not a stick insect. So in this picture, there are three. And um, this is a species that's found in Singapore. I'll tell you a bit more about them in a while. So globally, uh, we have more than 3,000 species of stick and leaf insects uh, known to science. And there are more than 600 species that are found in Southeast Asia. So this species that's um, in the picture at the moment, it's a species that's found in Borneo. So we, we caught that in Brunei, super cool. I like the, how the spines are going and uh, I like sort of like the wood, wood um, lines on the insect. Okay, so I'll share with you um, our journey of looking for stick and leaf insects. And first of all, let's just take a closer look at this region where we're in. So we've been looking for stick and leaf insects in Peninsular Malaysia in Singapore where I am and also in Brunei. And these places have amazing forests um, and also amazing biodiversity and stick and leaf insects are just one of the many um, organisms that we see in these forests. So um, I'll, I'll take you on our journey going to Brunei. So we fly in from Singapore and first of all, we have to go on to this boat um, to get into the forest. And it's a bit of a challenge because as you will see in this picture, those pieces of luggage there are ours. Um, they're sort of secured on top of the boat. 
it's pretty nerve wracking because I have like thousands of dollars of equipment <laughs> on there and there. Yeah, we, we could be just wearing one set of clothes by the time we arrive, but we, could, um, we couldn't do without our equipment. So it's a little bit nerve wracking. And um, after about 45 minutes of that boat ride, we transfer onto a car and then onto this long boat. So you can see members of our crew trying to load on our, our luggage and our field gear. And this is us in a long boat. So it's, you have to sit maybe, you can sit maybe about four or five people in a long boat plus all our many luggage. And it's a really cool ride through the forest. I'll take you with, uh, with us on a video. I hope you can hear the sounds as well. see we've arrived at the field station. So this is the um, Kuala Belalong Field Study Center that's owned by the University of Brunei. Our collaborators at University of Brunei very kindly uh, allow us to stay there. And I'll take you on our journey. So we've arrived at the field study center. What sort of place is this? You've seen a little bit of the forest, you've seen some of the river, and it's mainly a rainforest. So if you've heard You've wondered why a rainforest is a rainforest. Um, here's an example of uh, why it's a rainforest when it rains. <laughs> so that was us uh, on the field studies center. It's pouring, it's really wet. Um, but these are the forests that we'll be going into later. And you saw a bit of the river. So that's the river that we arrived in. Um, this is another picture of the river on a much drier day. You can see the forest on the left and the right of the river. And we go to um, these forests to look for our second leaf insects. This is the river Sungai Tamburo. Um, so to go, to go to these forests, we pretty much travel upwards because we arrive right in the bottom of the valley in the boat and at the field study center. And then we sort of have to climb upwards. Um, and part of these uh, trails lead to this canopy walkway, which is super cool. So in this picture, you can see two members of our team, Aslin and Mishak, and they're standing on the canopy walkway and you can uh, have a, an awesome overview of the canopy. So we typically go there at sunset and I will tell you why in a moment. Um, beautiful pink and blue, I hope it comes up on your screen as well. So we wait for night to fall uh, at the canopy. We have our dinner and then we start looking for our stick and leaf insects. Okay, so now night has fallen. Um, you can see a picture of uh, five members of our team. And I say five because I can see five hit lamps and they're looking for stick and leaf insects. We'll take a closer look at this. So this is Andrea Cole, a student who was working with me. She's wearing a headlamp. We're out at night. You really need a headlamp to be able to see anything, to see where you're walking, and most importantly, to look for the stick and leaf insects. But you also notice she's wearing long sleeves. It's definitely not because of the cold, I assure you. It's really warm in the tropics. You're, you're sweating buckets, um, but there are a lot of insects around that may bite you. So you're usually wearing long sleeves and long pants and, and boots. So with this gear ready, um, we then look for stick and leaf insects. So here you can see our crew, really excited. There are four photographers at the moment. Everyone's taking pictures and videos of, um, of our find. And it, it's amazing. So it's really cool for us. It's really dark. That's why you can see nothing much except for the, the flash that's from the cameras. OK, so now that I've sort of brought you to um, the stage where we found something, what exactly is this that we're finding? So. Stick insects. You had a bit of a taste earlier trying to find the stick and leaf insects uh, or stick insects. So we know they look a little bit unusual. <laughs> um, so you're familiar with stick like looking ones, I hope. 
So this individual here, have a look, how many legs do you see? I'm not guessing anymore. <laughs> okay. Uh, three, I see three. Yes, you're right. Uh, so I see three as well, but I also see two more legs. So this is a stick and leaf, a stick insect that is found in Singapore. I'm pointing to the head um, at the moment. You can see one, uh, one eye and the other eye is sort of partial, but you can also see the area where the insect has stretched out its uh, first two pairs of legs. So this way. Yeah, so that's why you can't see um, two other legs and there's a, a fifth leg missing. <laughs> but you should be able to see sort of five legs and only because uh, it stretched out its first two legs. It's antennae are also there if you take a closer look in the inset. And that's a really cool uh, behavior that we're looking at at the moment. Okay, and some other stick and leaf insects look like leaves. Uh, this is another species of leaf insect that we can find in Singapore. The head is on the left side of the screen. And what's really cool about this uh, is that it even looks like it's been partially eaten. So this white circle where you see it's a uh, left front leg is, a bit of a brown edge, it sort of looks like it's been chomped on. And it makes it really, really difficult to find in the field. So we've only seen, uh, we've only seen three individuals in the field in the last two years that I've been looking for them. Super difficult to find. And I think that's because they have an amazing uh, um, camouflage. Okay, and some other sick insects like this one can look crazy spiky. So I hope you can identify the eyes. The eyes are sort of in the middle of the picture. And then it's got spikes around the head and around the body and around the legs as well. So they can be super spiky. And crazier still, some of them could even look like they have lichen on them. So you see this like, it could look like it's some lichen on a bark or something that just fell off. So it's, it's pretty crazy looking. And they're super amazing. So I hope by now you've got an idea of why uh, they're called stick and leaf insects or uh, walking sticks because they sort of look like parts of vegetation that's walking. Um, so we're, we're studying that. But I'm even more interested in colorful stick insects. So I don't know if you've seen colorful stick insect before, but you're about to see some. So this is a newly hatched leaf insect. This is the baby of um, the leaf insect that I showed you earlier. It's actually literally the baby. Um, we brought her home and we um, had her eggs hatch. So it's really gorgeous. It's, it's super small, but it's got some brown markings. It's got some white and some pink markings. Um, but when it gets a little bit older, it looks like this. So I think that's pretty crazy. It's got green, it's got pink, it's got yellow, as well as the brown and white markings that I had earlier. And we're not quite sure why it has these colors. So um, my group is studying this. We also have this other species. Um, this is another species that is found in Singapore, in the forest of Singapore. I hope you can see the brilliant colors that it has. It's this bright green with like yellow specks. So it, it's beautiful. Uh, I think it's beautiful. And we even have this sort of stick insect. So I hope um, the picture doesn't really do it justice. So when we found this insect, it was maybe four meters above us. It was on a tree. We spotted it and we were like, okay, we have to get this. So the, the boatman was super kind and he was trying to climb up the tree to bend it down for us. We managed to get a picture of this and then it flew away. So that was pretty devastating. <laughs> it's, that's why it's not a great picture, but I hope you can see the beautiful purple uh, and blue markings on this insect, as well as the red eyes. It's amazing and we'll love to study more. So this insect is found in Brunei. And I'll show you another insect, which is one of my favorites. So this is another stick insect. Crazy. Uh, I love the colors on this female stick insect. It's yellow, uh, yellow orange wings. It's got a red abdomen. Um, even, the red, uh, even the legs are sort of orange red and it's got like blue colored knees. And I think that's pretty crazy. And what's really cool about this uh, species of sick insect is that it was first identified in uh, 2016, not by myself, but um, an entomologist. And uh, last year, so 2019, uh, 19, when we went to the forest in Brunei, we found this insect and we're like, awesome, 
you know, beautiful sick insect, let's take her back to the lab. And then she laid a couple of eggs and we had a male. And I think this is really cool because prior to this, um, the male of this species was never described. So we had to sort of grow him up. Um, and now he's been described, not by myself, but someone else because I'm not a taxonomist. And so with that note, I will tell you a bit more about how stick insects grow since I talked about how we um, hatch that insect. So first of all, um, insects like stick insects and other insects, they have to grow by uh, sort of shedding their skin. So you know, it's snakes have to shed their skin to grow bigger. And that's pretty much the same for stick and leaf insects. So on the right is the mold. You can see it's a bit translucent. Um, there's not much stuff in there. It's pretty hollow. And the insect that um, has just emerged is on the left. So this is a pretty young uh, stick insect nymph. And let's look at a slightly older one. So this is super cool. Um, this insect was seen in Peninsula Malaysia. So we were walking in the forest and we were like, what on earth is this? This insect is about 15 cm long. Um, so it's pretty big. And what you can see on top is the moat. So it's much smaller than the insect that's emerging. So it's still in the process of emerging. She's sort of like hanging out of the moat at the moment. You can see the bits of the um, moat that's hanging out, the white parts as well. And it's, it's really, really cool. So we were standing there for maybe uh, 15 minutes. It didn't move much. We came back a couple of hours later at the end of our walk and it was still emerging. So it's a pretty slow process. Okay, so this is another individual, but it's what um, this species would look like. So the previous individual, we couldn't stand, along, uh, stand around long enough to, to watch it emerge fully, but this is what it should look like um, when it comes out. So it's a really big species, really cool, very pretty. Okay, so now that you've seen a bit of um, how sick insects grow, this other really interesting topic uh, is about sex lives of insects or stick insects. So this is another really cool uh, species that's found in Borneo. We saw this in Brunei. I hope you can see the colors on this uh, species. The female is at the bottom and the male is on top. Um, the female has these um, brown and golden um, colors, markings on top of it, but it's also green at the bottom. And the male is similar, um, but a lot smaller. And that's typically what we see uh, for stick and leaf insects. The males are usually a lot smaller than the females. So this is just a regular mating pair. But there are other species like this. So this is a stick insect species that's found in Singapore. And the nymph is the one that um, I asked you to identify right at the beginning. So how many stick insects could you find? So this is the um, adult female. And the really cool thing about this species is that um, no males have ever been found. And that is actually not so uncommon for sick insects. So for many species of sick insects, um, they're known to be pathogenetic in that they don't have to um, have, an, have a sperm fertilized egg for the egg to be able to develop into a, a sick insect. So um, no males are required. And We've caught this female um, in Singapore and we've brought her back to the lab and she's had offspring. We've had the offspring grow up and they were all females and they laid eggs and they're all, um, they're all fine. So yeah, we don't need males. <laughs> That's really cool. Okay, so you've seen a normal mating. You've seen um, insects that don't need males to have um, babies. Now I'll introduce you to another species of sick insect. This is super cool. I really like it. It's bright green. Um, it's got these purple marks down its um, dorsal side and it's got a yellow uh, circle. So when my students found it, they were like, hey, this is the Pokemon um, stick insect. And I was like, and so from since then we've called it the Pokemon insect. It's great, it's beautiful. Um, and so when we found this in Peninsula Malaysia, we were like, oh, this is really pretty. And then we saw the next individual, which was this. I hope you can see this. Um, the female is the one at the bottom and there's this darker insect on top. And we're like, hey, we found the male. Awesome. We, 
we have a male and a, we have a female. And so I then asked the uh, local expert, Dr. Francis Xiaochen, and I said, hey, is this the male of the species? Um, and he said, no, this isn't. So it's a male stick insect of a different species. Unfortunately, they just try to mate with everyone. So um, it, it's, it's not gonna be successful, but um, yeah, such things happen as well. Okay, I've given you a very quick quick peek, peek into the lives of uh, stick and leaf insects. Um, and I've brought you through some of the species that we found in Peninsula Malaysia, in Brunei and in Singapore. And, oops, sorry. And I want to end um, my stick insect story by sharing with you this quote from Jane Goodall. Um, only if we understand will we care, only if we care will we help, only if we help shall all be saved. So um, I thank you for caring about our stick and leaf insects, for caring about biodiversity, and um, I wish you a good and pleasant day. So um, I'd like to thank these people who have worked with me, um, the lab and many collaborators and um, people and organizations who have uh, supported us. I'm done. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Eunice. Uh, oh, let's bring up that slide so people can check out more. So everyone who's on online can check those out. Uh, send an email to that email address if you're keen to ask even more questions when we're done today um, and learn more about the amazing work she's doing. Fantastic. Well, if you want to come out of screen share, we'll ask you some questions now to yes. kick off. That would be fantastic. Um, Evolution is wild. What a beautiful presentation. I've seen things that I've never seen anything like that in my life. So that was super cool. Um, my first question, and I genuinely did not know that some of them clearly have wings. Do they all fly? Because I would have never guessed that, that a, something that that ungainly could fly. That is wild. No, no, not all of them fly. Okay. <laughs> How do they look? Have you seen them flying? Like, what does that even look like? <laughs> um, it, it really depends. So yeah. some of them can sort of uh, fly decently others are a little bit awkward you know like flopping around yeah. so we usually can go after them when they fly unless they're like three meet three or four meters above us so but on the ground if they're <laughs> stopping somewhere else not too far away we usually can go after them because they don't fly for too far yeah um my curiosity is, is about singapore itself so brunei is a heavily forested region beautiful like it looks very, I mean, it takes a while to get there. And I love stories like that, where we highlight the work it takes to get the field sites. Within Singapore itself, I mean, this is one of the most heavily populated areas in a small area in the world. How many insects do you find? Have you found, I don't know, like, is there a, uh, you charted in your uh, bio, a decline in insects worldwide, which is something we've covered in a few of our presentations so far. Um, is there a big insect biodiversity where you live? Uh, so I can't speak for all the insect biodiversity, but for our stick and leaf insects, we can find, um, depends on the, the weather actually and the luck. So on a good night, we could easily find 10 or more stick insects. And that's for maybe three or four hours of walking. Yeah. Um, on a bad night, it could be zero. And bad nights are nights where it's been, it hasn't been raining for a long time. So it's been really dry and there's not much around or it's been raining really heavily for a long time. Um, like today, it's been raining a lot. Um, if, it's, if it's too heavy, the insects are hiding and it's not so easy to find them. Right. And when you're finding them, are you, I mean, you're taking pictures obviously very enthusiastically, four or five people around and it's like, which is awesome. Um, do you handle them at all? Are any of them poisonous in a way that you'd want to be leery about handling them if you're a member of the public as well or? Right, right. Um, first of all, I would, recommend that the public don't handle um, wild organisms at all, <laughs> um, period. Feel free to take pictures. Uh, and we've known how viruses can be transmitted from um, wild animals potentially. So please don't handle wild animals, insects, period. Um, we do handle them, but we're very careful and um, we do have permits as well to handle them yeah. or to yeah. collect them. So we only collect them in places where we're allowed to um, and handling them sometimes because of their spikes, you know, the, some of them that you've seen in my slideshow, they have spikes and they can pierce through your skin. Yeah. So that can be a little bit unpleasant, <laughs> but we haven't, um, we haven't found any that are poisonous. Okay. There are other groups that are, that are studying uh, the chemicals specifically. They have some interesting chemicals, um, but they're probably to deter predators. 
Um, but yeah, no, we, we haven't found any yet. Fantastic. And how do you get into this? Like what, what drove you as a, were you interested in this from when you were a little kid or were you in university and was like, okay, I'm going to study this particularly. What, what was the driver? Uh, well, I've taken a very convoluted uh, route to get here. <laughs> so I had studied um, mosses when I first started um, in university. And then I studied spiders and their behavior and colors. Yeah. And then I moved on to study beetles, um, color and behavior. And so now I've moved on to stick and leaf insects. And I think the choice is really because um, for my PhD, I was working on beetles in Australia. And moving back to Singapore, I had to find another group to work with. So I chanced upon this uh, book uh, that the entomologist had written recently in 2016 that I was talking about. Yeah. Uh, so Dr. Francis Yachun has these amazing books, beautiful books, beautiful pictures of uh, stick and leaf insects in Southeast Asia. And so I was like, hey, I have to study their behavior and ecology. Yeah. <laughs> most, most people don't just read a book and decide they're going to devote years of their life to it. That's very, like, it's fascinating. And, and something that we've seen in all our programs over the last day and a half is just like a relentless passion for wildlife. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's so very, it's awesome. Way to go, Eunice. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for people, you know, as, as we're getting close to wrapping up, actually going to a, another session, these things fly by. It's amazing. Um, I'd love to know, uh, you highlighted your email, some of the ways that people can learn more about you. If I'm a kid around the world, mm -hmm. in China, Portugal, France, Germany, etc., um, and I want to get interested in insects, is there a resource or places or things that I can do to learn more and get excited and, and become as, as passionate as you are? Um, sorry, off the... <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't tell <laughs> you it immediately now. Con there contact me and I can try and direct you. I know some people in Germany who... Who would uh, who have stick insects? There are some amazing groups in Germany who are working with stick insects. They have amazing collections. So if you're really cool, uh, if you want to look at stick insects, I can direct you to them. If you're in Singapore, come by my lab. <laughs> not not now, but when the lockdown is. <laughs> when the world opens up again, when it's all good. Um, <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. One thing uh, we've been recommending uh, BBC programs for the last few days, Life in the Undergrowth is one of the ones that really inspired me. And yesterday with Dominique Gonsalves in Mozambique, uh, she highlighted the Edward O. Wilson Foundation. So one of the leading ant researchers ever, um, highlighting some really, really cool insects. So you can check those out if you're keen uh, and certainly uh, head to Eunice's lab in Singapore, which I, you know, that's an invite that to after Marina Bay Sands in that beautiful garden, might have to come check that out. It's very Yep, cool. drop me an email. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, um, Eunice, thank you so, so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you uh, taking a time out of your day, especially, you know, I can think 12 hours difference from now, which is really exciting to highlight uh, amazing people like you around the world. So thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me and thanks for listening. <laughs>